Hi, I'm Sister Mercedes from the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, and I'm here visiting at the Most Blessed Sacrament Friary, the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and today happens to be the feast of our Holy Father, St. Francis. So, Father? My name is Father Francis Mary. I am the novice director here at Most Blessed Sacrament Friary, which means that more or less I am in charge of accompanying the men who are entering our community in sort of the the year-long process called the novitiate, um, which happens as a second stage of their formation as they're entering Franciscan life. Could you tell us something about Franciscan spirituality? Because Franciscans and Dominicans were friends from it's back true. in the day. It's true, even it's, though it hasn't always been yes. the smoothest friendship. Right, but anyways. right. But we were founded as friends. We're between Francis and St. <laughs> Dominic, okay? Up to us to live it. <laughs> we have to live that, well, we're trying, that we're friendship. Trying. So I, obviously, being a Franciscan, there's there's a lot of different things about, particularly the person of St. Francis, who's just such a, a huge figure in the church, and, and even in sort of the, the imagination of the world, I think. But I guess one of the things that I um, I would identify is, is kind of the, what we would say, the incarnational aspect of the spirituality, but like the concreteness, is that Franciscan spirituality is a spirituality that the idea is not to be divorced from everyday life, and I think particularly, I've just been thinking about this recently, there can be a huge tendency to compartmentalize yeah. in our lives today. Mm -hmm. And Franciscan spirituality says, no, 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 no. Jesus wants to be a part of every part of your life, from your relationship with your family to whatever. And so I think that's something that I find uh, moving for myself personally, but also important for, for the world today. And then for Dominican spirituality on the, on the other side, it's very similar in terms of this beautiful idea of the incarnate word, um, a, model, um, a motto for the Dominican order is very tough, which is true. And Dominic founded the order in a bit of a response to some of the heresies that were going on in the day, the Albigensians, and this recognizing the spiritual poverty that existed and wanting to give the truth of the incarnate word to these people and share that. And I love being able to have that as part of my own vocation and living out that life. Um, so I love this, this idea of the incarnation being lived out in these, in these beautiful ways yeah. in terms of the actual life yeah. and the incarnate word um, that we both kind of share in that way. So that's something that I love is just being oriented towards the salvation of souls through looking at people's spiritual poverty and entering into that with the incarnate word of Christ. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And Father, what do you think is like one similarity between the Franciscans and Dominicans? I mean, so historically, right, mm -hmm. like one of the things that really sets the Franciscans and Dominicans apart, which I think, again, is really important today, mm -hmm. is is just the, the idea that they're both mendicant orders. Yep. So there's this sense of uh, a kind of stability, although I think Dominicans are more <laughs> stable than Fran Franciscans tend to be pretty unstable uh, in a lot of different ways and chaotic. But anyways, Jesus loves us and all of that. But um, but in both of the in both of the orders, there's just this sense of yes, the the communal aspect, but also this real sense of like mission and mm -hmm. being sent out yes. as brothers mm -hmm. or sisters, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, so that's something that strikes mm -hmm. me as similar and, and again, important in the world, yeah. in the church today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Something that has struck me is actually the monastic practices that we share. And it's a beautiful thing because yes, we were founded as um, mendicant orders in the, in the 1200s, but we've been able to preserve some of these monastic, monastic practices that were apostolic and contemplative and seeing how that forms our lives to be able to be freer to live out the charisms of our respective communities and mm. our founders of the Holy Father, St. Dominic and St. Francis. And I think that's so freeing for us to be able to live it out. And even today, we have kind of have this responsibility in our patrimony to be able to bring that to the world. Mm. Beautiful. I yeah, think both, not only for our Franciscan and Dominicans, but also for the respective founders of our communities. Mm. Being able to retain that patrimony that we've been given and we need to live in the world today because mm. that's something that we get to bring that's yeah. been going on for 800 years but looks a little bit different now but doesn't at the same time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know? it's, yeah, it's, it's really well put. I live my life in the context of fraternity with brothers mm -hmm. and I live my life in, in the very concrete context of in a, in a poor area with people who are materially poor, whether homeless or, mm -hmm. or with addictions or different kinds of, uh, of poverty. And it just keeps it real for me. Like I, I like I have this huge tendency to just get stuck in my head, in myself, yeah. and like how many times 
is it like my brother, either because of his own struggle or because of his joy or because he annoys me or whatever, who kind of pulls me out of myself. And like the Lord uses that, yep. you know, and it's just mm-hmm. so often that it's just like, it brings me back to reality. And I've often like very regularly thought, if I didn't have to sit down with these guys and get dinner, <laughs> I, I wouldn't take care of myself at all. Yeah. Like if I was just yeah. a priest, you know, mm-hmm. living on my own and a pair I would be a total disaster, <laughs> a total disaster. So in any case, yeah, that for today at least, that's what strikes yeah. me as one of my, yeah. one of my, the things that I'm most grateful for yeah. about my vocation, I guess, about Franciscan yeah. spirituality. Yeah. No. It's a beautiful thing because it really, it's a witness to that call to communion and community that we all have, mm. but we get to live in a particular way as religious right. and community yeah. Yeah. and how it's, a, it's intensified because we're together a lot. <laughs> But our, our intensity of living the life and living the evangelical councils is intense because we press the vows. Yeah. So it should be that much more intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, in a lot well. of ways. But to witness you all, something I like about being a sister. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. Tell me. Spiritual motherhood. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's That's wonderful solid. to get to live it in community and see it within my sisters receiving it and be able to be it. Mm. But then also bringing because that's what fuels it. Honestly, it's like the Eucharist and then my sisters. And then being able to go out and be that for my students mm. and for those I encounter. Mm. And Beautiful. that's something that's yeah. only possible with my consecration. Yeah. And because God would have done it in any way, I'm sure. But this is how you made me to do it. And I know that and I love it. Mm. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having this interview, Father yeah. Francis Mary. I'm thank grateful you. to be here. It's been a great visit. They're very wonderful here. And uh, we paid her to say that, by the way. So, with all that money behind. <laughs> <laughs>